Multiple boards in a Jira project. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video, and don't forget to check out the links down below so that you can help support the channel. I got merch, I got paid courses, and most importantly, I got links to the sponsors that make these videos possible. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. This video is sponsored by Release. Let's first start off by talking about some basics. What is the difference between a Jira project and a Jira board? I often hear these terms be used interchangeable, and while for the most part, you can use them interchangeably, they are actually quite different, and I wanna make sure you understand the differences here. So a Jira project is the fundamentals of a Jira thing, right? Every interaction that we do in Jira, whether it be issues or searching for stuff, right? It all comes down to an issue, which is inside of a project. Now I am being very deliberate here. Issues live in projects. A board, on the other hand, sits on top of a project, okay? And so you could think about this in this way. Think of a Jira project like a house and a board as a room in that house and the issues being furniture inside of that house, which is also inside of a room, which is why for the most part, you can think of them as interchangeable words, but they become very different the moment we start adding more boards to a project, AKA we start adding more rooms to a house. And so when you first create a Jira project, you are okay. You are allowed to interchangeably use project and board because the criteria for a board is basically any issue in this project will automatically show up in this board. So it's a one-to-one, -one, which means that a board equals a project and a project equals a board. They're interchangeable. But that all goes out the window the moment that you add two or more boards to that project because board A needs to have different criteria as opposed to board B. So let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly about having multiple boards. And really, I'm gonna to try to help answer, should you have multiple boards in a project? Well, first, let's talk about the good. If you are an organization that is centered around a product or a project, then having multiple boards in one single project is a really, really good thing because your teams don't have to go to different projects to figure out what's going on. Everything is contained in one project, so you have this singular view of everything, of every team. So if you have software dev team A, software dev team B, team C, you have a QA team, they can all coexist because the issues are all going to be in that same project, so the handoff is very, very easy. And the best part, really what makes this really good, is that the issues don't have to move or you don't have to duplicate issues in different projects. The data is all singular to just that single project. So this is really, really good. And you want to avoid duplicating data or moving data whenever possible. And that is about the end of the good. Let's just talk about bad and ugly at this point because that was the only good example I can come up with. So the bad stuff. So the first bad thing about using multiple boards is that the criteria for each board has to be unique. And what do I mean by that? Anybody can create boards in Jira. It's very easy to just click that create board button and just create boards. But every time that you do that, after you give it a name and you pick whether it's a Kanban or Scrum, the filter is automatically the default, which is, hey, any issue in this project shows up on this board. So what's the point of having four, five, six, seven boards that are exactly the same? They all just have the same criteria. So this is no good. This is bad, right? And so if you are going to go down the route of making multiple boards, make sure that the filter criteria for each of those boards is unique in such a way that it's actually beneficial to have the boards. Otherwise, you're going to have extra boards that are all just duplicates of each other and that's not good. Now let's get into the ugly. There's a couple of ugly things that I really want you to be aware of. One of them is really, really ugly, and the other one's quasi-ugly. So let's start off with the quasi-ugly. So when you make a new board, you are gonna be given the option between selecting Scrum or selecting Kanban. Now both boards, while they do achieve very similar things and they look exactly the same in Jira, they function radically different under the hood. So let me explain this. When you pick a Scrum project, you're gonna get a Scrum board. That Scrum project is going to ship with three statuses, to do, in progress, and done. And the way the Scrum board is going to behave is that you are going to have a backlog. 
the moment you hit the create issue button, that issue is going to show up on your backlog. When you're ready to plan out a sprint, you're going to create a sprint and you're going to be able to take that issue from your backlog and move it into your sprint. Now, what happened here, this phenomenon of moving an item from the backlog to the sprint is going to edit or alter the sprint field in a scrum project scrum board. Okay. So the moment that you take an item from the backlog, the sprint field is going to be empty. And when you put it into a sprint, that sprint field is not going to reflect the name of the sprint. In Kanban, it doesn't work like that. It works drastically different. So when you make a Kanban project, the default workflow you're going to get is backlog selected for development in progress and done. So notice that those four statuses, two of them are much different than to do. And the way a Kanban board works is first out of the box. You don't even have a backlog, like a dedicated backlog. So you have four columns on your board. And the moment you hit create issue, everything shows up. Now you do have the ability to move your backlog into a dedicated backlog. So it starts looking a lot more like a scrum board, but this is where things get really tricky. So now in a Kanban board, when you take an item from your backlog and you move it into your selected for development, you are not editing the sprint field, but rather you're changing the status. You're transitioning the item from the status of backlog to the status of selected for development. And this is where things get really ugly because if you're not careful and because Jira will allow you, you can have multiple scrum and multiple Kanban boards in your Jira projects. And what's going to happen is whatever template you picked when you created the project, that's the type of workflow you're going to get that favors either Scrum or Kanban. They're very, very different because they behave very differently. And so the ugly is when you mix, when you have a mix of Kanban and Scrum boards in your project, one of them is going to have a lackluster experience. And what do I mean by that, right? So you're either going to have one less status or you're going to have too many extra statuses. So the workflow is really what screws the whole thing up. And you want to be very, very careful to not mix this, or if you are going to mix it, just be aware of that phenomenon and how these boards work, because it's going to trip you up if you're not careful. For example, if you start with Kanban and then all of a sudden you create a scrum board, well, that backlog status is going to move into the sprint in a backlog status, which then gives you the selected for development status, which then gives you in progress. So you got to like double hop to get the work in progress. If you're going the other way around where you start scrum and then you bring in a Kanban board where well, you're going to be short of status because the very first status is going to be to do and you're moving it straight to in progress. There's nothing in between to get you from to do to to like select it for development. So you're going to be short of status. So either way, it's going to be a lackluster experience going the other way. So you want to be very, very careful if you do that. And then finally, let's get into the absolute most critical ugly that happens when you have multiple boards. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. I recently discovered Released, a Jira app that generates stunning release notes straight from your Jira tickets. What used to take me hours takes minutes with Released. It's so easy to use. Just drag and drop your issues into the editor to craft your release notes. Then publish your announcements with a single click to your website in-app widget or Confluence for internal collaboration. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. If you have multiple scrum boards, there is an event where you can have a story that shows up on both boards. It's okay. But when you move a story in board B into sprint B and that same story exists in board A, well, that sprint just came over to board A and now you've contaminated your sprints. And so now they basically become the same board. And so that also means that when you close sprint B, you're closing it on board A, and it is just a very, very ugly, ugly situation. And it just screws up all the metrics and it just makes for a very, very unfavorable time. So what can you do to protect yourself? Well, there's one little thing, one little detail that you can kind of do to mitigate this phenomenon. And that is when you create your criteria for what goes to board A versus board B, you want to use a single select field that can only have one value. For example, the team field can only have one value in it. And what that means is story can only belong to board A or board B, never an and. And because of that, there will never be that contamination and the two scrum boards can live in parallel, as long as they never contaminate with each other. So as long as you can guarantee that an issue will never be in both boards, you're fine, you can do this. 
but you again have to use a single select as your criteria because if you use something like your component or your fixed version or anything else that has multiple options then you can't guarantee that the issue is only going to be in one and only one board it can be in multiple boards which is going to yield unfavorable results now the other thing i want to let you know is that if you go down the kanban route right you can have as many kanban boards as you want and the issue can live in any and all kanban boards because there is no sprint concept in kanban and so there's nothing for you to contaminate an issue you can have everything show up everything's fine you, all those rules that i just described as being ugly only apply to your scrum boards so that's pretty much it um, those are the one good the one bad and the couple ugly things that come with respect to using multiple boards so the multi-million dollar question is should you have multiple boards in your project well as long as you know the good the bad and the ugly i think it's safe to navigate and actually be successful with multiple boards i've done it a million times it will work as long as you follow these guides that I just defined for you. So as long as you ensure that the issue is only in one and that you pick either Scrum or Kanban, and if you are going to do both, you understand the limitations and you favor one method over the other, you're going to be just A-OK. -okay. Now, I also want to know what problems have you seen? Maybe you have some good, bad, ugly yourself. Let me know in the comment section down below so that maybe I can do a follow-up video in the future. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. I recently discovered Released, a Jira app that generates stunning release notes straight from your Jira tickets. What used to take me hours takes minutes with Released. It's so easy to use. Just drag and drop your issues into the editor to craft your release notes. Then publish your announcements with a single click to your website in-app widget or confluence for internal collaboration make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial if you enjoyed this video make sure you smash that thumbs up also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you're wondering hey how can i help support this amazing channel well there's links down in the description below where you can start free 30-day trials to the sponsors that make these videos possible i also have a merch store and i have paid courses so go check them out and i'll see you in the next one so fight, fight.